This, as the assailant approaches, is to put your hands up in this manner and look scared. Act scared. You want to lure him in. You want to use the element of surprise. You want to use every single nasty, deceptive, dirty trick possible. In this situation, you probably will be scared. Become a hand. Overacting. Really draw him in. Let him believe that he's in control of the situation. The other important principle from here is that there is not enough distance for you to gain really effective power in many striking techniques. Besides the fact that the hands are going to be brought up in front of you in this type of fearful position will negate the effectiveness of many blows. So again, your opening gambit in this type of situation has to be the most effective one possible. In this type of scenario, the most effective first strike to use will be some type of grasping, gouging, ripping, tearing maneuver. The two areas that we would direct those types of blows are going to be at the throat, particularly the jugular notch and the eyes. If Bob were to strengthen his neck, tense his neck up, you'll see that he can resist. He can resist a lot of pressure at the throat. However, he tenses his neck and I drive my thumbs into his jugular notch, this area right here, it's virtually impossible for him to resist that pressure. So the first technique we're going to use is going to be a double thumb gouge to the jugular notch, knee strike to the testicles, and then a downward axe hand to the nape of the neck. From this position, slowly all right this is the end of the second tape that we've done and we've gone on and covered some more basic blows basic combinations and again stressing the principles that not only we believe in and follow but have been proven over many many decades of actual warfare, actual close combat. That number one principle is the principle of offensive, ruthless, aggressive attack, not a defensive mindset. That principle is paramount. Now, we'd also like to address the differences between what we do and what most other traditional martial arts systems do. We do not consider ourselves a martial arts system. We teach a system of close combat. It involves armed and unarmed close quarters battle techniques. We base what we do on the teachings and the experience, the actual real life experience of well-known combat instructors such as William Edward Fairburn, uh, Eric Anthony Sykes, Dermot O'Neill, uh, Wesley Brown, Colonel Rex Applegate, John Stiers, Charles Nelson, these are men that served in various military capacities, usually with elite units, saw actual warfare, devised, developed, researched, studied, and taught systems of close combat that actually were used and saved lives in real life combat, real life situations, both for the military and for law enforcement. Most of the people affiliated with us are either law enforcement officers, either past or previous military experience, they have a sense of what is real, what works, and what doesn't work. Our point is not to denigrate any system of martial arts. We don't do martial arts. We do effective, realistic, close combat that is intended to save lives. We train in unarmed combat techniques. We train in knife, club, fighting firearms, we train in methods that will really be used in today's world. That is what we do. Again, the point to what we do is that we want to save lives with the most effective practical systems possible. Our methods have evolved from real life situations and come down from men who have actually done this. 
actually done this. Many of our students, again, as I said, are in law enforcement, have been in the military, are in the military, and they understand this because they live on a daily basis with violence. They see what works and what doesn't work. Our main primary function is to disseminate knowledge to those people who wish to have it on what constitutes real-life, life-saving fighting tactics. Thank you very much.